Farmers in Kenya are now using these super seeds to feed their families when water is scarce. Now, I call them super seeds because they are heat and drought tolerant, they cook faster, and they entail 15% more iron and 10% more zinc than your normal beans. Plus, they've been developed only recently, but farmers already love them, as this one can tell you himself. I can harvest 9 to 12 bags from an acre of land. Unlike other varieties where I would only get five to seven bags, the difference upon comparison is substantial. When I bring beans to the market, they consistently fetch a good price, selling for 200 Kenya shillings per kilogram, while other varieties often go for 100 shillings a kilo. Now, how would you go about creating such seeds? I'm sure you would answer breeding, genetical modification or something in that fashion, but how does that really work? When scientists were trying to develop a blue tomato variety, don't ask me why, they looked at all the wild tomato varieties and discovered that some tomatoes actually grow to be blue, but not consistently. So what the scientists did is that they took some of the seeds from those plants and planted them in their own facility. As you ideally want to breed plants in a high-tech greenhouse to have control over the environment. Simultaneously, Obviously, you plant another row of tomatoes, but this time it's a commercial tomato variety that you would like to turn blue. When the time comes, you take pollen from the wild blue plants and transfer it onto the commercial variety. Then you wait for the tomatoes, pick the bluest ones that the commercial variety produced and replant the seeds from them. You would then repeat this until you are left with commercially usable tomato plants that produce only blue tomatoes. And I would assume that you now see how this process is a lengthy pain in the ass. It works like this for whatever trait you would like your plants to display, and in today's case it's drought and heat tolerance. And since taking some random bean plants, seeing how they do in drought and heat, and repeating the whole process as with the blue tomatoes would take ages, scientists often take the easier route and borrow genes from other organisms. For example, if you would like to make a plant drought resistant, you would take a cactus, isolate the gene that helps cacti survive without water, mix these genes with teeny tiny gold particles, load them up into a gene gun and then shoot them at the plants that you wanna enhance. You then still have to observe the plants if they accepted the genes and pick the best ones, but it significantly speeds up the whole process. And the genes don't even have to come from plants. When researchers wanted to create an insect resistant corn variety, they took genes from a bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis and and inserted them into corn plant cells so that the corn leaves produce insecticides themselves. Or what they do in the apple farming industry is that they plant an orchard with trees that have high quality hardy root systems, let them grow for a bit and then cut them off near the ground and graft other apple trees that produce the desired variety onto the stumps. By doing this you get a tree that grows delicious fruits and is relatively resistant to the outside world. Now with the big Beans, I get a feeling that we are trying to artificially replicate what the Hopi people have been doing for millennia. That is growing extremely hardy crops that don't even have to be irrigated. But we are now trying to give it a bit of a flair in terms of higher yields, better nutritional values and faster cooking time. However, the faster cooking time sounds a bit controversial to me. I mean, it is a good idea because farmers could then save on energy costs when cooking the beans since they can take hours until they are properly cooked. But that's mainly because they are so starchy. And how you would go about making them cook faster is to either modify them to not grow so starchy or maybe make them produce less complex carbohydrates. Either way, the faster cooking beans could theoretically be less calorie dense. I'm not saying they are, these are just my thoughts. But if that was the case, the Africans would have to eat more of the beans to get the same amount of nutrition, essentially paying more to get the same amount of calories, and that's might offset the saved energy costs, but I'm no bean expert or a starch expert, so these are all just my theories. Also, if the whole planet is gonna become a hot desert, 
No resistant seeds will save us, and it would be better to look into indoor farming. And if you would like to learn more about the Hopi people and their agriculture, then click on this video. Thanks for watching.